Right, today I'm going to have a quick first impressions and test of this windless Italian mace. Um, so this is windless steel craft um, Italian mace, I think it's meant to be once around 14 or 1500 design. And it's a fairly heavy hefty thing, but before I actually get on properly with the video I need to make a complaint about it. This was the leather handle to it, basically it was wrapped all around this section. Um, but whoever packed this, and I don't know if it was at Winlass or if it was at the night shop where I bought it, regardless, um, whoever had packed it, they put an absurd amount of grease all over this thing, and obviously yes, that's to stop the metal rusting, I understand why they do it. Um, but they'd also coated the entire handle section with it. What had happened as a result is that the bottom section of the leather wrap had just turned to sludge, because obviously the grease had been on there, the oil, long enough. It dissolved the leather, made the grip useless, so I had to peel it off. So if I end up feeling like it, what I'm going to do is probably get that tennis racket sort of tape and tape it up with that so I can have that on there because I've cleaned all the oil off now. Um, but yeah, I don't see why they put so much oil on it, especially because it's kind of, you know, blackened steel anyway, which isn't going to rust until you start getting it really filthy. I know it's for long-term storage, but still. So it weighs about four and a half pounds, which I guess is just about over two kilos. Um, and it's a fairly heavy and hefty thing. Now, obviously, I'm sure most of you will know what the purpose of a mace is. Um, humans have used them throughout a lot of history, but this is obviously, as I said, an Italian design type one from about 1500s-ish. And the purpose of this was smashing in somebody's head if they had an armoured helmet on, or, you know, causing other blunt force trauma. Now, yeah, how these worked is you would swing it, you know, down on somebody's head. You can use these either one-handed or two-handed. Um, for me, I'm going to probably need to use it two-handed. As I said, it's about four and a half pounds. The majority of that weight is at the end. It feels very unnatural trying to swing this thing. Yes, I can do it with one hand, but I'm not trained to do it. Um, you know, I'm not anywhere near as built and as tough as they'd have been back then when they fought each other on these battlefields, swinging things like this at each other. So, um, for me, because it's got the long handle where you can use it either two one-handed or two-handed, I will probably, in this video where I test it, swing it two-handed, because then it's swinging it more like a baseball bat, and I personally feel like I've got more control over it and I'll do more damage to what I'm hitting. So, yeah, other than it came with the dodgy thing where I had to, you know, pretty much chuck this lever out, as I said, I might rewrap it, I might not, um, otherwise it's pretty good. You can kind of see there at that end where there's sort of brown stuff around where they'd sort of done that crappy oil job on it. Uh, you've got lanyard holes there and there if you wanted to do a lanyard with it. I don't know if I particularly want to because I'm not going to be doing any reenacting use of it or battlefield use. Feels fairly sturdy, you know, doesn't feel like it's going to come apart. Now, these do have hollow steel tubes. Um, a lot of people complain about that, but that's actually sort of a historical thing. Uh, Skilled Grin, or however you pronounce his channel, he's done a very good video on one of these, so if you're interested in his review, which is one I looked at before getting one of these, check it out. These only cost 60 to 70 quid, so they're not absurdly priced when it comes to, like, you know, recreations of medieval weapons. I think a lot of people are a bit, mm, about windless, but something like this they can't really screw up, because it's a, um, you know, very basic thing. I'm personally not going to say Windless is good or bad until I've looked at more of their products because I don't think you can accurately say I've looked at one of their products and think it's bad therefore um, all of their products are bad kind of thing. Anyway, so one of the complaints people do have, sorry, um, not getting off topic, is that it's a hollow steel tube um, and as I said that's from what everything I've looked at Maces that's realistic. You'd either have a hollow steel or a um, cast iron tube or you'd have um, like a wooden handle, like a wooden shaft, hardwood shaft, like you would have a lot of pole arms. Um, and the reason people complain is that when you swing it around a lot, if you keep hitting the same side of the mace onto something over and over again, it starts to bend the you know arm of the mace, the handle, the pole. Um, and as I said, that's what you're going to expect if it's a hollow steel one it's going to bend if you keep hitting the same edge of the mace over and over again what you could do obviously is do some strikes on that side flip it around 180 degrees do it again on this side you know that way i don't think you're going to keep bending the metal one way or the other um but yeah that's pretty much what you you'd have to expect to happen with a mace like this because it's made as they were if this entire thing was filled with steel, this was an actual full steel bar, you know, if you look at the length of it, 
if the entire thing was a steel bar going up to the head, the weight of this mace, I guess, would be twice what it weighs already. It's already hard to swing for somebody who is not trained to use a mace. So, you know, it would just be ludicrous if the whole thing was filled with steel. It would cost a lot more to buy, um, you know, it would be a lot heavier. You wouldn't have such a devastating effect of the mace head hitting the target, because obviously with more weight at the end, that means you have more poundage, more energy applied to where you hit. So, as I said, the purpose of these was smashing in people's heads who were wearing helmets primarily, because as the medieval period went on, armour got better and better, and, you know, swords and things were pretty much useless at fighting people in full armour. So that's why you ended up getting maces and pole arms and whatever else. Maces, of course, predate the medieval period to various degrees, but ones like this were designed that there's a guy with a hefty bit of armour on, swing this at his head, you know, hopefully bludgeon his skull in with it, um, cause brain damage, kill him that way. You know, or just swing it against parts of the body, even somebody not wearing armour. This is designed to take out people wearing armour. I guarantee you, if this hit you at full force, no matter what you were wearing, where it hit you, you're going to be very seriously injured, if not killed. So anyway, let's get on with the testing. I've got a milk jug to splatter. Um, I don't know how this is going to hit this, because it's not a sharp thing. There's kind of like little axy kind of heads there on the flanges. But I'm then going to hit some wood with it and see what it does. But as said, I'm not going to be destroying this mace. I just want to have a quick test, because we know with two-handed swings what I can do with it. Pretty destroyed there. Yep, works pretty well. Okay, so what can we learn from this? Well, it completely destroyed the milk jug. I didn't know if it was going to bite into it or not, but it did. So, again, that's not a massive accomplishment because milk jugs aren't very strong, but still, it was interesting to see, you know, how that kind of just split and went flying. Um, obviously caved in that thin sheet of metal fairly easily. Now, that's a bit of metal I use as an air rifle backstop sometimes because air rifle pellets can't penetrate that, but crossbow bolts can. I found the 40 pound crossbow I've got doesn't really penetrate it, it makes a little bit of a hole but the bolt won't go in, the more powerful crossbows penetrate that but obviously in terms of wham, yep this is pretty good at <laughs> bending aluminium so that gives you a good idea although obviously actual proper armour would have been a lot stronger than that it does give you an idea of what would happen if you had that sort of stuff on and this came down quickly on you. Um, when I hit the wood with it very briefly Hitting the wood with it didn't really do all that much. It put some indents in, but again, the wood was, you know, moving out the way when I hit it because it's just loosely rested up against the um, fence. But, you know, these bits where they went into the wood still did some damage. You can see on that one there's actually a bit of, like, wood splinter or something on there. So, yeah, if this hit you, it would certainly do a lot of damage. There's no question about that. And that's the primary role of a mace, obviously, is to um, hit things and do damage with it. So, yeah, this is certainly a pretty fearsome weapon. As said, I'm swinging it with both hands when I'm doing these things because I am um, not skilled enough to swing it properly with one arm well. Uh, it just feels very weird to me trying to swing something of a heavy weight at the end, you know, with your arm. It's nothing like swinging a machete or, um, you know, a regular sort of short sword around because all the weight is literally at the end. But... Yeah, with two hands, very easy to control, like swinging a baseball bat. Um, and yeah, because I'm sure there's lots of kind of martial arts sort of techniques to using a mace, if you did sort of look down into it that much. But for the most part, these are very crude and simple to understand tools. You don't need to have it held in a certain way, because each end of it, you know, 
it's got the bladed sort of flanged head on it so each way you swing it is going to do pretty much the same thing you know it's no matter what end you bring down on somebody that is going to have the same effect so yeah this windless Italian mace uh, it's not broken at least from me swinging it into a milk jug a couple of bits of wood and uh, you know a couple of bits of metal but um yeah, I did say, as I said, a big complaint about the grip on it. Again, it's only a crappy leather wrap you get with it for the grip, so it's not the end of the world. But, you know, whoever packed it like that really should understand you don't put grease all over leather because it's just going to erode it. But other than that, yes, I am very happy with this. Uh, it's easy enough to swing without gloves. For a lot of use, you might want gloves on with it, or as I said, actually have a wrap on it. But... Um, the tubular design means it absorbs shock very well, you don't feel the shock going into your hands after an impact, um, unlike some other weapons I've tried, you know, you don't get the vibration go down your arm which can hurt, but yeah, this is quite nice. So if you wanted a mace that's around the sort of anywhere between 50 and 70 pounds depending on postage and VAT and everything else, yeah, the windless mace seems very good. As I said, quite a bulky thing. Um, you know, if you're going to get a mace, you might as well do it properly. Um, I will also mention they do a German mace in the same series of this. The German mace has a slightly smaller head from what I can tell. Um, and when I looked at the specifications, it's uh, lighter by like about two pounds lighter. So it's almost half the weight of this one. And I think that's because the head is smaller and the shaft is thinner. So I think the German mace is probably the one that's intended for one handed use primarily. And this is the one that, with the bigger handle. This is like a hand and a half sword. It's, you know, intended for two-handed use primarily, so you get better leverage and speed, you know, swinging it. But overall, yeah, the windless Italian mace, pretty damn good, I'd say. <laughs>